Hey, I'm an artist and a creator, and this week I turned 40. And like Sir Davos says from Game of Thrones, nothing f***s you harder than time. Well, actually, it has been a really great ride so far. But looking back, if I had to start as a creator today with the portfolio I had 15 years ago, it just wouldn't cut it. And even though I've had my share of moderate successes, there's still many days that I feel I'm not good enough. And on those days, I play Baldur's Gate 3. So although it's been a very tough and rewarding career so far, I have learned a lot. And today by sharing a lot of that story, I'm hoping to help you on yours. If not, you can always enjoy the painting. Creative journey is not linear. I haven't seen any two creators that I know in the field that have had the same path. And me, I've never had a plan. And perhaps maybe that was my biggest problem. And this is a little ironic because I used to work at my family's steel shop for many years and we always said, measure twice, cut once. And when I was younger, the only thing I really did know was that if I did fail at an art career, I would be stuck working in this family business, which for me was just deeply depressing. It's just very dirty, very gray, very manual labor. I just don't get the opportunity to kind of think, and of course I'm just a much more colorful person just when it comes to my personality. And this is probably the largest single thing that I do in all aspects of my life compared to when I was younger is planning. I feel I just thrive and do much better on the day to day, on the year to year with more planning. Whether that's planning my video game schedule, whether that's planning my gym routines, whether that's planning some content that's scheduled to be released. Everything helps when it's planned and when I was younger I just didn't bother doing it. And I do hear from you guys how often enough that you do feel it's too late. Well, it's never too late. I went into, you know, our standard college system over here in the US as graphic design. And I stayed with that for many years because I didn't know any better. I just wanted to try something creative. It was a very expensive experimental stage of mine given the price of colleges over here in the US but once I kind of figured out a little bit more of what I wanted to do I did shift careers and got into I guess fine arts programs because they didn't have game art you know stuff over here on at least on the East Coast as far as I'm aware and I stayed with you know traditional illustration and fine art programs till I was 24 years old. So um, let me clarify all this at this stage. Even at 24, I had graduated, I had a ton of debt, and I still didn't have a plan. And on top of that, I didn't even have a portfolio. Well, I felt lost and ripped off for you know a couple of years there. My family business that I deeply respect but didn't want to work at did help pay for some of that college tuition, but I still owed, you know, close to 100K. And so I really just went, um, you know, day to day, I, I do a day job, I'd come home, you know, go to the gym and then do art uh, till I was too tired. And then of course, a couple nights of the week, I'd go out and, and see friends and everything. But it was a tough, kind of grind and a lot of it was this all mental just giving myself a reason to keep going at it being an artist was a little bit simpler you know I think it was like back in 2008 right there wasn't so many social media sites YouTube was in its infancy uh, there was an art stations there was basically kind of just like deviant art and the conceptart.org forums which I know myself and many others, especially for, for some of you that have been around forever, uh, remember posting. It was a really 
healthy environment over there to kind of grow, you know, as an individual. But, you know, there is, back then there was like, it felt like there was like 200 of us on, on just Facebook, right? There wasn't Instagrams, there wasn't TikToks, uh, YouTube was a very different platform. It really wasn't about being an influencer. You just kind of made fun, 15 minute long hobby based videos. It was a very different culture. But damn, those were the days though. I, I did love them. But nobody was mentoring online with YouTube being still young. Furthering my education online back then was severely limited. They had these things called Nomen videos. They were very expensive. I guess there was a, a more practical school, but they didn't have like online courses and everything that you might recognize them from, you know, today. You'd buy an expensive DVD, you watch it, and your my mind would be blown. And then I'd try to learn those techniques. Techniques from people like Ryan Church or Fang Zhu. These guys that had a much earlier start in the mid to late 90s working on high-scale productions. But yeah, there was just very limited options, you know, for learning online, but you, you soaked in whatever you could get, which is the complete opposite of today, where there's literally almost too many options for many of you. But my big takeaway from this, this point in my life anyway, is that degrees are expensive and meaningless. And to this day, I've never had a recruiter, any kind of project manager, any art lead or art director ever ask to see any kind of credentials as far as that's concerned. They're just pointless pieces of paper. All right, fast forward just a few years. At, at this point in my life, you know, I was 26. I'm still living with my parents. Occasionally, I get the freelance inquiry you know, from like DeviantArt, my inbox over there. It was nothing big, maybe like a book cover. Maybe it was to work on a few illustrations for someone's card game, right? Really small jobs. But these were essential in me just learning like the business of illustration or the business of art. I had no idea, you know, how to create, let alone manage like invoices and things like that. And I needed these low risk, earlier uh, client works to help me learn the ropes in that regard. It was still tough mentally though, because you know, at 26, I had a lot of friends in town, my small local backwater kind of town in the woods where I grew up, they all left. Like I was probably like the last one still living there. And with my parents, and I just felt like everybody else moved on. I felt like the world was like passing me by. It, it was a very frustrating feeling that I did have to deal with. Maybe not every day, but certainly it haunt me every week. It's not that I felt specifically like a failure because I had no idea what I was doing. Um, but it was it was frustrating. You know, like it, it definitely felt like I was uh, fighting an uphill battle. And I guess till this day, it's still kind of like that. But certainly I was falling into the trap all too often of comparing myself to others too much. And I just had to learn that there are strictly just too many outcomes in which I can't control. And I really just had to, you know, bunker down and focus on things that I can control. You know, just constantly just focusing on my craft, and how many video games I can play. Yeah, guilty. See what I mean? Constant distractions on the day-to-day, -day, and I can't even blame this one on the kids. But honestly, at, at this stage, with my art, I wasn't good enough. This is, of course, something very hard to objectively realize in the moment when you are you know, busting your ass, trying to improve every day and on the weekends. But I see a lot of students follow into similar molds 
where they are really frustrated that, you know, perhaps they're not getting work yet or they think they're ready for work yet. And of course, realistically, there's still a, a ways off from that, you know, it's and it's about learning, you know, production pipelines, even communication skills need to be learned and practice in a field like this. But maybe it was how naive I was at the time too that actually kept me going. I was just trying anything and everything because I didn't have a plan. I was doing illustrations. I was doing what I thought was concept art. You know, I was just designing cool looking robots and airships, you know, just drawing them, throwing them into scenes cool looking castles and sci-fi buildings but these weren't concept art they had nothing to do with like functional design and they wouldn't solve anybody else's problems and that was my problem i had a huge misconception of what i needed but it it was good enough to get by with the occasional gig i mean i was still working as a part-time bus driver every single day as well but I, you know i would I would doodle in between my runs. I was trying cartoony stuff. I was trying realistic stuff. I was heck trying some photo bashing uh, matte painting as well. Literally everything because I didn't have a better plan. But I still managed to have a lot of fun. You know, in my 20s, I, I hiked mountains, you know, every, every Thursday. We'd go to a beach, you know, in the summer months, you know, at least once a week. We'd go clubbing once a week. I, I got into a terrible relationship with alcohol, you know, younger. I've got that, of course, managed nowadays. On occasion, I would do an art test. And I, and I you know, as long as it was paid, of course. Um, and I could get a couple gigs that way. But a lot of it, you know, was just getting this life experience and kind of properly learning how to be an adult, you know, in the world. I, I did move out, you know, and I was just getting an apartment nearby. So, yeah, managing expenses, finances, dealing with the college debt, uh, car debt, right? And it was a lot cheaper, of course, to live back then as a younger person, too, than the sheer amount of responsibilities that uh, someone like me has today. The types of art that I was doing in my late 20s was like, I, I got a gig for a good year doing theme park design. I'd come up with ideas and illustrations for this company based off of, out of Florida. That was really fun, paid all right. I worked for two years on it for a casual game, did a lot of like those hidden uh, picture objects, a lot of like those adventure point and click type of game art. And you know, I did do the sets and the assets on that. A local studio they, they found me online somehow I don't know how but of course I was happy it was like the first real consistent art paychecks I was getting um, you know and I started YouTube at that point too which has been something I'm continuing of course to do to this day and so uh, basically by my late 20s even after the most basic form of success that I could have. I actually got a little arrogant. It was a really toxic time and it really stunted my growth as a creator. And it it's not like from the perspective that I thought I was better than everybody else, but it's thought, but I thought that I knew more than I did. And as it turns out, uh, of course, the more that time unfolds me, uh, the more I realize that I don't know. You know, I had just hit a really weird place in my development where I thought I was just completely beyond, you know, doing routine studies, practicing fundamentals, you know, observational work, which is really an important pillar for a lot of artists is, you know, to record information by producing art with it. I thought I was beyond that. Well, I did know I had to continue to grow. I just thought the only way to do that was to constantly challenge myself with like harder and larger and, and more complex imagery. And honestly, they, they 
would take forever to do. And sometimes they just didn't really work out that well. And it was, it was a really frustrating place for me. And cause like I did have a little bit of luck occasionally putting together a, a, a moderately complex image and it was well received. That's like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going. I have to like constantly make a better one. Um, and I don't, I don't think that that's true so much at all anymore. I don't follow that philosophy. I, I love doing, you know, simple images like this old little boat, you know, for example. I, I find this very therapeutic. I still find there's room for me to even grow, uh, although it'd be modestly, you know, if from a, doing an image like this. Of course, also at the time, I got this new haircut that I'm still rocking today. Didn't do a lot for my confidence at the time, but you know, we'll make the best of things. But it's really once a lot of creators out there began, began to tutorialize their content, you know, putting out gum roads, you know, making other YouTube channels that I really was able to learn a lot of how my peers were creating it. And that actually got me back into that learning bandwagon again when I when I saw how many weird little special techniques and and approaches, you know, that, that my my fellow creators had when it came to making an image. I could simply instead of approaching a problem to solve from like point A, I could jump in at point C or point D and kind of tackle a similar thing, but from a very different way. And it just motivated me more to get back in and learn. So it, and, and part of that was just networking, you know, just talking and striking up conversations with my peers online. But I think the, the more important lesson here is as a creator and, and to grow as a creator, you have to just be able to keep yourself accountable and keep pushing yourself and, and progressing at a steady pace. Because yeah, if, if we're not gonna keep ourselves accountable for that, I mean, nobody else will. And then we'll stagnate, we'll fizzle out, and we won't grow, you know, as it turns out. So yeah, we have to kind of really approach it from that mindset. But yeah, by by about 35, you know, and I, I did a lot of teaching up to this point. That, that's always been a staple. I've discovered that how much I've loved that. It's always been a cornerstone now and something I take a lot of pride in. But, it, you know, around this time, I, I, I started to get better gigs. I finally got some of that triple A experience I sought after for so long. I thought, yeah, I'm the shit now. Um, but no, it, it, it it's like a slight ego boost to know that you're like good enough to even kind of land a client like that. But it, it is very short lived. It, it was for me realistically. And it never felt as rewarding as helping the students, whether that's with CGMA, whether that's you know, the Brussels mentorships and whether that's the Patreon online, nothing is more rewarding than helping another frustrated, stuck, creative. Um, but it, it is a fundamental truth, I think, for mo a majority of us in a field like this that, yeah, uh, everything is going to take longer than you had planned for. You know, it, I'd already worked eight years in the field before I got a big name client and I just something I grinded out towards. And I, and I again, I get this with my personal work. I don't attract a new big client, honestly enough, with the other client work. When I, a client does approach me, it, it is always for something more personal that I've done. And I try to tell my students that, and of course you guys, that's what's always served me best. You know, it's just kind of creating from the heart. You know, that sounds corny. It is, but it, it's what has always served me well. And, and a lot of students out there do have like this fixed sort of mindset in many scenarios, because I was one of them way back in time, right? That if I take X program, you know, learn this and then study this for like five months or, or take a course for eight weeks, I'll be ready, you know, I'll be ready to go. Yeah, man. No, right? Realistically, it's gonna take a lot more than that. Like it's, it's very easy, of course, to consume and absorb information. It's easy to educate yourself, easy enough. All you need is a little discipline, but the actual act of implementing and, uh, and absorbing that information, that could take 
much longer, months, and maybe for some students, years after they've taken a program. Things will click, you know, much, much better. It, it's just how it is, even for the best planners. That's why, I mean, I'm recommending to everybody, do your best to plan and block your time and, and to build, you know, your schedule accordingly. Have a, have a two-year plan, have a five-year plan, have a weekly plan. <laughs> Planning everything will just increase your efficiency across every category but yeah it it did take me forever to get where I am I, I'm not gonna blame that, that there was a lack of information out there but they, there was of course less but I didn't plan and I neglected of course studies for many years and I was afraid of feedback I occasionally did muster up some courage to ask an artist you know, that I looked up to, like, hey, can you give me some honest feedback on such and such a thing? I did that once in a while, and of course, with a lot of kindness and respect, but for the most part, like, I'm, 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 I was terrified of that. I was terrified of hearing the truth. I didn't, I was in denial for many years that I wasn't good enough, and realistically, yeah, maybe I wasn't, but it's something if I had heard and sought after, you know, a, a nice feedback cycle, I could have improved much faster. I could have been here maybe five years ago where I am today. But this whole side of my career, you know, to 2020, 2024, I'm, I'm working on a whole different set of skills as a creator, you know, negotiating with clients, collaborating with uh, others, getting better at video interviews. And that's the little small tip for you guys out there too. If you want to get a job with a studio, every one that I ever did involved at least one sort of video call interview, whether that's on Zoom or Google Meets, have yourself an okay camera and at least be comfortable talking on it face to face because it can make or break the fact that you're getting hired. The fact that you even get a call, and I, I learned this, right? The fact that you're getting a call time means the work is good enough. They're not even really kind of checking you out at that point. It's kind of like a feeler. And they want to see how you are, per, you know, from a personality standpoint, they want to see how you can communicate. And they're really judging almost everything but your art if you're in an interview for an art job. And it's something, that of, of course, that I've learned over the years too, as well as like, if you're not even getting interviews, then the work needs to be better, right? So it's it's always art skills, people skills, business skills, the big three that um, I'm constantly working on. And I, I feel very insecure about in many ways for, for each of these categories. And maybe if you guys want to know more about that, I could open up to that in a whole separate video. But yeah, it, it is something we tend to deal with. Moving in the future, of course, I still have a couple book ideas I want to do you know, more so like educational and, and you know, business from an art and creator standpoint. I would love to collaborate with my wife on making a children's book, you know, at some point too. She's she's an art educator as well. She does much cuter. I think she has much more marketable art. Um, I'd love to collaborate with her sometime, make it our own children's book together. Uh, and I'd love to run a, a successful Kickstarter still. That's still on my to-do list. Haven't done that yet. Uh, I still want to attend Lightbox in a year or so, so that's on my to-do list. And I want to keep growing and hopefully building up you know, the, the company, the Brush Sauce brand, the studio, the academy. I want to, I don't want to be a big, massive company, but I'm learning to work, you know, with freelancers and of course support for, you know, you guys watching this, this video and, and the Patreon, I'm giving that back and hiring into the community, you guys to help keep this content stream rolling. So again, I thank you guys for anything you've contributed and even watched up to this point. So with that said, I think I've rambled enough for this video. Hope you've enjoyed the painting. Keep dreaming big, keep working hard. That's all I gotta say for now. I'll catch you guys next time.